don't you lift your hands to heaven and bless that unchangeable Lord. The one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The one who has brought you here today to do something in your life that only he can do. Why don't you praise him? Praise him as if you are the only one here. Praise him as if you are the only one who is grateful. Worship him. Adore him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Praise him as if you know he's worthy, worthy to be praised, worthy to be adored, worthy to be magnified. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Praise the King of Kings, praise the Lord of Lords. Praise Him. Praise Him. Thank you, Father.
not ask me to tell someone that the very reason why he sent you to the world shall become known this year. The ancient of days will worship you. The one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, we are joined. The one who has no beginning and has no ending, the I am that I am. The all sufficient We bow before you. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for all you've done, particularly in this stadium in the past. Thank you for what you are about to do now. Thank you because you have the power to do anything. Glory be to your holy name. Today, in the life of all your children gathered here, in the life of all your children in the rivers family, in the life of all your children all over the world who are listening to us right now, Father, do something new. Do something wonderful. Do something miraculous. Do something glorious. But I pray that before this day is out, every one of us will have a marvelous testimony. And concerning your children who are here, my Father, my God, I hereby decree every plan of the devil concerning you is cancelled. Jesus, mighty men, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. And then look around you. There will be one or two people you have not seen yet this year. Shake out with them and say happy new year to you. I let me please be seated. And uh, since I've not seen many of you, I also say Happy New Year to you all. I want to thank the Almighty God for River State. Um, The first time I came here as a pastor was 40 years ago. And on that particular trip, at the crusade that we had, God raised the dead. And I'm trusting him that he will do it again today. So when the deputy governor began to prophesy, I said, glory be to God. Thank God that we have a deputy governor who is full of the Holy Spirit. I want to express my deep appreciation to the governor. Because again and again, he had made this place available for us to use. And I remember very well that God gave him a prophecy here too. That has uh, led to several things happening in the River State. And I will want to tell him, as God lives... God who can do things again and again, that the Almighty God will continue to bless him. Amen. 
حالا کھائی چاپ تک کرے واسکس مالاکائی تری واسکس وائی یو اوپنی یو بائی بوز لیٹ می سی آئی گریٹ آل مائی برادرز اور سیسٹرز آپ یا پرٹیکلرلی ای چیرمان آف کائن تینکیو ویری موش در فور کامی اور ای وانت دی پایر تو نو دیت از جوجوا یو آر ویری گو I came in, that was good, that was very good. We appreciate you, God bless you. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. And Malachi is a chapter of the Bible some people don't like. Because of verse 8 to 10. And there is verse 6 there. And he says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. There is a God who does not change. His name is Jesus. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. I'm going to be very brief today because what God wants to do, He had already done it. One of the things He did is that he brought you here. Just to come and pick up what is yours that you can only pick up right here. So that we are here at all, your case is already set you. So I will ask you to please listen to me very carefully in the very short period of time that I will be talking to you today. Psalm 91 verse 1, Psalm 91 verse 1, describes God as the Most High and as the Almighty. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Most high means is higher than the highest. Almighty means he has all powers. He can do all things. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Luke 1 37. For with God Nothing shall be impossible. It might be a good idea if you prophesy to your neighbor and tell him or her, my own will not be impossible with God. And because he is also the Most High, not just the Almighty. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 115 verse 3, Psalm 115 verse 3, that our God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. You know, he said, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. If you think you are high, there is somebody much higher than you. As a matter of fact, no matter how high you are, you are under his feet. The earth is his footstool. He is sovereign, so he is free at any time to say yes or to say no. 
When he says yes, nobody can say no. <laughs> I don't have all the time. I would have asked you to tell your neighbor once again, God is going to say yes to my prayer today. When he opens a door, nobody can shut it. When he shuts a door, nobody, and I mean nobody, can open it. So I can decree to you straight away that every door that the enemy thought they had shut against you shall be opened today. Not because he's so powerful, so high, original majesty, the one that nobody can say, what are you doing? He said in Romans chapter 9, verse 15 to 16, Romans 9, 15 to 16, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And compassion on whom I will have compassion. And if I choose to have mercy on somebody and you don't like it, sue me. Ah, God is going to be merciful to somebody today. Whether your enemy like it or not is none of his business. I want you to write this date down. This is one date you will never forget for the rest of your life. And I'm saying that one to let you get one big point. You must come before God today with strong faith. Because whatever your problem, no matter how big you think it is, that problem is under his feet. But you must come to him with humility. He will be merciful unto whom he will be merciful. The choice is his. Come with faith. Come with humility. How big your problem is, means nothing to him. In fact, the bigger your problem, the happier he is. Because when he solves the problem, everybody will know that only God can do this. Believe me honestly, before the end of this week, somebody is going to sing. And say, come and see what the Lord has done. If you are that one, let me hear you shout hallelujah. But come to him in absolute humility. That's important. Now, that's by way of introduction. Do it again, Lord. He say what? You have healed before. Heal again. Many of the testimonies I will give you today are testimonies that happen in Port Harcourt. So you will know 
that if he did it before in Port Harcourt, he will do it again where? Aha, aha, aha. In Matthew chapter 8, from verse 1 to 3, Matthew 8, 1 to 3, a leper came to him in humility. He fell before him and said, I know you can heal me. I know. Because I know you've done it before. I've had the testimony of Naaman in Second Kings chapter 5 from verse 1 to 14. Second Kings 5, 1 to 14. I know you can make a leper clean. That's why I've come to you on bended knees. I know you can if you want to. And Jesus Christ said to him, All right, since you know what I can do, I do it for you. Testimony one. God had cured the incurable before in Port Harcourt. <laughs> Forty years ago, the best of doctors and the best of the hospitals in London said to the parents of a young man, Take your son home if you want him to see his native country again. He has at most two weeks to live. They brought him to Nigeria. Someone told them to take him to redemption camp. When I saw him, because he had cancer of the jawbone. The head had swollen like a big keg of pan wine. The case had been so bad that he was hungry, but the swelling had constricted his throat. It took him one hour to drink a bottle of Fanta. Because I had to sip it a little bit at a time. You will know how young I must have been 40 years ago. I've never seen anything like that before. Even my faith was shaken. But then I know that they have not brought him to me. They brought him to the one who can heal, who can cure the curable. Today, that young man... Forty years later, he's alive, he's well, he's married, he has children. So I am decreeing in the name that's above every other name. If the doctors have told you your case is incurable, the doctors will be surprised. If you have a relation at home that they have told you there's no hope for this fellow before this sun sets, you will testify. He had delivered before. He will deliver Again. In Matthew 15, from verse 21 to 28, Matthew 15, from verse 21 to 28, a woman came to Jesus Christ and said, ah, Help me, have mercy, include me among those who will receive mercy. I'm not the one in trouble, it's my daughter. 
grievously vexed of the devil. He worshipped Jesus. And Jesus said, all right, because you have believed. Go home, your daughter is well. He has done it before in Port Harcourt. I came here 1989 to full gospel uh, businessmen fellowship international convention. And a, a, a lady there went home with an anointed, an anointed handkerchief. I won't tell you how she got it so I don't get into trouble when I'm going home. And in any case, you won't have to get it through her own method. You will go home with every piece of dress on you anointed. She got home and she had this little flimsy sister raving mad. Took six men to hold her down. She got home and said, Give, just give me space. I've got something. And lay that anointed handkerchief on the girl and immediately she became normal. Today, in the name of the one who is called the unchangeable changer, if there are forces of darkness trying to hold you down, when you shout the next hallelujah, you will be free. How did the woman know that there's deliverance in the Lord? Because before read the testimony of Nebuchadnezzar, he was mad for seven years. The God set him free. I have good news for you. It doesn't matter how long the family enemies have been waging wars against you. If they don't let you go before you get home today, they should get ready for the grave. In Second Kings chapter four, verse one to seven. Second Kings chapter four, from verse one to seven. A widow of one of the sons of the prophets was totally bankrupt. And uh, the creditors were coming to sell the only thing of value in her home. That's the two boys. She ran to the man of God and said, help me. She knew the man of God had no money, but the man of God was connected to the one who says, silver is mine, gold is mine. And she ran to that man because she knew God has provided before. She had the story of what happened in First Kings chapter 17. From verse 8 to 16, First Kings 17, 8 to 15, of another widow who had only one meal left for herself and the son. And God stepped in. And what was to be the last became the first. Run to the man of God, help me. Your God had done it before. He could do it again. I have good news for you, my beloved children. God has provided before. 
He will provide for you again. And somebody in particular should pay special attention now because God is coming your way directly. He's done it before in Port Harcourt. We were having a program like this and God spoke and said, there's someone here. You will have two major financial breakthroughs in quick succession. And God continued and said, the first belongs to him, must bring it to God. And God said, the second will take care of all your financial problems. Was quite a crowd there. And there was there a widow with about 17 children living with her, seriously in debt. And I mean, the money she was owing was not in, was not in naira; it was in pounds sterling. A serious debt. She was at the meeting. She heard the word and said, Ah, Lord God Almighty, you fished me out. She came back to Port Harcourt. Within days, she got a major financial breakthrough and ran to me at the camp and brought the money. Uh, I told her, I said, sorry, ma. I can't take this money. I said, what do you mean? I know your situation. <laughs> you have some 17 mouths to feed. I know how badly in debt you are. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm talking of money that was frightening in those days. I'm talking of uh, early 1980. And the woman came with over 200,000 naira. And in those days, the naira was stronger than the pound. Those days will return. Yeah. You better say amen loud and clear. Yeah. So I told you, I, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't. God said two eh? and go and wait for the second one to come ah. she looked at me and said daddy I thought you loved me I said I do if I don't obey God for the first one how will the second come so I said alright I got your point I took the money but I didn't touch it I kept it Forgive me if you say my faith was little. (laughs) May God increase your faith. It wasn't long after that that the second one came. They wrote a letter from London, from the bank that the, 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 the husband was owing heavily. Oh! We've discovered that we made a mistake. Your husband is not owing us, we are the one owing him. (laughs) Make a mistake financially in London. Are you kidding me? That there is a God who can change books around. Uh, there is a God who can catch the wise in their wisdom and turn their wisdom to foolishness. Your husband is not owing us. We are the one owing him. Come and collect what we are owing. I'm talking of a daughter of my name, Jacob, who ended up becoming a member of the board of a very big bank. 
Listen to me very carefully. It's not an ordinary day. Someone here, God wants me to tell you, within the next 30 days, you're going to have two mighty financial breakthroughs. And he told me to tell you that it will make things easy. That you can spend the first one. He said it will take care of your financial problems. And he asked me to tell you the second one belongs to him 100%. If you believe you are the one God is talking to, do I hear your amen? He has provided before. He will do it again. All right. Then, when you read John chapter 11, thank you, Father. <laughs> and he asked me to tell someone, he said, you will understand as soon as you hear. He said, that project will be completed this year. In John chapter 11, from verse, just read, read the whole chapter from beginning to the end. It's a story you know very well, the story of uh, Lazarus who died and was buried four days before Jesus arrived. When Jesus arrived, ah, thank you, Father. Well, let me say amen to this one before I tell you. The Lord asked me to tell someone, he said, I will shine my light on your path. <laughs> By the time he arrived, the sister said, Lord, if, if only you had come on time, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask God, He will do it for you. Where did she get that kind of statement from? Because what she was saying is, you have reversed the irreversible before. And I know you can do it again. Because definitely they must have read Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 11. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 11. When God spoke to dry bones through his prophet, the Bible said the bones were not just dry, they were very dry. And yet, they lived again. I have good news for somebody here today. Every irreversible good thing that has happened to you will be reversed today. <laughs> well, I have to give you a testimony. This one is not actually in Port Harcourt, but uh, we can claim it. Some of you have had the testimony of a daughter of mine, married to a very wealthy man, and completely barren. And then after running up and down for a while, somebody very close to the husband called him and said, stop wasting your money. We have removed the womb of your wife. 
she is not going to have a baby. And then she came to a program like this. And the word of God came. Ah, today God will send his word to you. Yeah. Word of God came. There's someone here that they say you can never have a baby. God said I will give you a set of twins. Yeah. And she jumped at it. But she knew that's, that must be me. Cut a long story short, she became pregnant. Went to the doctor. The doctor said, I don't know what's going on, but uh, there seems to be somebody in you. He said, not one fellow. There, are, there should be two of them. Oh. <laughs> you better thank God for the one. She came back about two or three months later. The doctor said, I don't know what happened, but there are two of them now. And because they were wealthy, they decided they are not going to try having the baby in Nigeria. They don't want an accident. So they went to UK. And the husband told, they had to. The husband said, I don't want labor. I don't want a case of the children dying through labor. Doctor. Just bring them out the operation. And two children, they will be enough for me. As soon as you finish, sew up the womb. And then they put her to sleep. By the time she woke up, she said, Where are my children? Because everybody was looking at her as if she came from Mars. What's the problem? Where are my children? They said, your children are fine. So they sent for the doctor. The doctor came and said, I have been practicing medicine. I have delivered, I can't remember how many thousands of people that is, she says she helped deliver their babies. He said, but this is the first time that I brought out a set of twins and there's no womb. He wanted to seal up the womb, but sash everywhere, no womb. <laughs> we all rejoice, we rejoice. And then, a couple of years ago, I got a phone call from her. By now, the trees are grown. Hello, Daddy. I said, how are you, my dear? Long time no see. I want to come and greet you with my twins. I say, ah, you're welcome. I, I've not seen them all these years. And then she came and brought a new set of twins. <laughs> Talk of double portion. Talk of double double, according to. <laughs> Every irreversible in your life will be reversed. And the Almighty God will double your blessings. And then in 4 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 34 to 51, 4 Samuel 17, ah, from verse 34 to 51. <clears throat> Lord asked me to tell someone that arrow the fire that you I will pull it out now <laughs> yeah I know today is going to be special because the Lord asked me to tell someone he said, the poison you ate in your dream has been neutralized. <laughs> First, where were we? We're First Samuel chapter 17, from verse 34 to 51. You have a, a, a real classical case of God will do it again. 
David said to King Saul, I was a young boy looking after my sheep. A lion came, took one of the sheep. I grabbed him by the jaw, by the beard. I punched him to death. Then a bear came and wanted to take another one. I grabbed him and punched him to death. Then he made a statement. The Lord that delivered me from the lion and from the bear, he will do it again. As far as this Goliath is concerned, Goliath, you are dead. In the name of the one who called me, every Goliath standing in your way will die. I can tell you stories upon stories, but I feel the Holy Spirit saying to me that uh, the wind of God wants to blow. So I will will get out of the way. But the Lord asked me to tell someone, and I believe he's talking about me, so I can say amen before I tell you. (laughs) Ask me to tell you, your star will begin to shine brighter. Let me conclude by telling you he has answered prayers before. He will answer again. How many of you believe God is going to answer your prayer today? Let me hear you shout a really big hallelujah. But you see, the word of God says in Isaiah 59, from verse 1 to 2, Isaiah 59, 1 to 2, he said the hand of the Lord is not shortened. God has not become all of a sudden uh, paralyzed. He doesn't change. So neither is he as heavy that he can't hear. He hasn't gone there. He said, but there is one thing that can stand between you and this mighty God. And he said, that is your sin. That is why before we pray, because we are going to pray in a moment, before we cry to this almighty, all-sufficient God to do again what he had done before, If you know you are still living in sin, come to Jesus now. Let his blood wash away your sin. This is not a joking matter. This is not an ordinary Holy Ghost rally. This one is special. If you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, or you claim that you have surrendered to him, but you are still living in sin, I beg you, before I count up to twelve, come and stand before the altar here. Let us pray for the salvation of your soul. There is a blood that has not changed, the blood of Jesus Christ. It cleanses from all sins. Come now, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, and we will pray, and the Almighty God will wash away your sin with his blood, And then when we cry to him, whatever he had done for others before, he will do it again for you. So I'm counting now. One. Two. He will do it again. He will save souls again today. He will heal again today. He will provide again today. 
He will deliver again today. He will reverse the irreversible again today. But you must come to him so that his blood can wash away your sins. Three. Four. Now thank you. Those of you who are clapping, your hands will never be empty. Six. And as you are coming, begin to cry unto him. Ask him to be merciful unto you. Ask him to forgive your sins. Ask him to save your soul. Cry to him. Don't wait for the others. Begin to pray. Begin to talk to him. Lord, have mercy on me. I need your salvation today. You have saved souls before. Save my own soul also. Seven. Eight. Nine. And pray as you come. Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul today. Let your blood wash away my sins. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Eleven. Hurry up, hurry up. Thank you. Keep coming, keep coming. I can see so many of you. Keep coming, keep coming. Make sure you get here before I finish pray, uh, praying. Now the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these brethren and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved our souls would do it again by saving the souls of these people. Intercede for them, brethren. Just for about two minutes, pray for them. Those of you on the way, hurry up. This is your day of salvation. Oh, thank you, my Father. Do it again, Lord. Save souls today. Save souls today. Forgive my sins, Lord. Give me the grace never to sin again. I want to be a true child of the living God. Give me genuine salvation. Save my soul today. Those of you still on the way, hurry up. I wait only 10 seconds more and then I will pray. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Just keep coming, keep coming. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. Because I want to pray now. Just keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name. I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for the power that is in your word. It is written, you send your word and you heal. You send your word and you deliver. 
So it's your word that has brought forth these people today. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, remember your word. You promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will know why it's cast out. They have come now. Father, please receive them. Amen. Have mercy on them. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Save their souls, O oh Lord. Amen. Receive them into the family of God. Amen. And from now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. Amen. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now those of you who have come forward, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Hmm. I rejoice with you. Because from now on, by the grace of God, I will be praying for you. That's why I need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will come round. They will give you cars to fill, to fill the cars, give it back to them. They will compile it and give me a copy. I promise you, I'll be praying for you. Uh, but I want you to stay where you are now, because we are going to pray one prayer together. Now, those of you who believe that today is your day, that, that without any doubt, this program is for you, stand on your feet and shout a big hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you, and that prayer is going to open the door of heaven. After that, you will now pray your own prayer. Your own prayer will be simple. You're going to say, God, have mercy on me, and whatever miracles you have performed before that you know I need, do it again in my life. So, we lift up our hands to him. So I'm going to pray for you now. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name. Ancient of days, thank you for arranging for this very special Holy Ghost rally in Portacourt. Thank you, Father. Now, Daddy, I am praying for every one of your children here today. Very soon they begin talking to you, they'll be telling you their individual problems. As they cry unto you, my Father and my God, answer them all. The only miracle I am asking for for myself today, Lord, is that each and every one of these your children will receive their miracles. Daddy, if there is one miracle that you have made up your mind to give to me today, instead of giving it to me, give it to this, your people. Answer them by fire. Before the sun sets today, let every mouth here be full of testimonies. And let them serve you forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Now you go ahead, open your mouth to the Almighty God and say, God, have mercy on me. Include me among those people who receive mercy from you. And every miracle you have ever done before for others. Do it again for me. Go ahead. Talk to the Almighty God. <laughs> Open your mouth and cry unto him. Cry unto the King of Kings. He is here listening to you.
Father, do it again for me. Father, do it again for me. Father, do it again for me. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, Lord, do it again. Talk to Him, do it again. Every miracle you have done before. Father, that you know that I need, do it again. Do it again, do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord, do it again, Lord. Lord. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Do it again. Every miracle, Lord, you know you have done before. 